Take my hand. Stranger in Paradise, The Lost New York Sessions, the critically acclaimed top 10 album. Matt Munro's Broadway sessions released for the first time in their original form. Also includes a bonus disc featuring 27 of Matt's best recordings, including Born Free, Portrait of My Love and Walk Away. See the links in the YouTube or Mixcloud description for more details. Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Born free As free as the wind blow From Russia with love I fly to you there could never be a portrait of my love to my mind she's my kind of girl this is the life here's where the living is come with us run with us we're gonna change the world you Maze so full of praise when we rearrange your world. We're gonna change your world. Hello, and welcome to the second of four very special programs on one of England's most underrated singers of the 1960s. From a poverty stricken upbringing in war torn Britain to a steady rise to fame as a beloved entertainer, this series is an intimate portrait of the man behind the voice. Drawing on previously unbroadcast interviews, extremely rare recordings previously thought lost, and interviews with his family and friends. This is Matt Monroe, the boy from Shoreditch. Well, last week on our show, Bob Court announced to the world a happy event in his family. This week we have Matt Monroe, who was recently waving a photograph around. Matt, uh, your happy event, boy or a girl? A girl, Brian. And the name? Michelle. I'm Michelle Monroe, Matt's daughter. And that was my father and Brian Matthew announcing my arrival to listeners of Saturday Club. In the first episode, we heard about the singer's struggle in the early days of his youth, dipping into show business in the army and the knockbacks that come from being in the entertainment business. But a phone call in October of 1959 from George Martin was about to change all of that. Matt was asked to record under the pseudonym Fred Flange for a new Peter Sellers album, and whilst he hadn't been at all happy about not being able to sing under his own name, his wife Mickey talked him into it. Her husband might not have been impressed, but producer George Martin was. He was so good at the job, so easy to work with. And I was so impressed with him, I said, Matt, I think we ought to make some records together. And that was the beginning of our relationship. So in January of 1960, Matt travelled to EMI Studios at Abbey Road for his first session with the famed producer. But finding the right formula to make a hit record wasn't a foregone conclusion. He was first paired with Ron Goodwin, who he'd worked with on the Peter Sellers track. They recorded two songs, but nothing caught George's imagination as a potential A-side. So at the next session, George brought in Tommy Watt. Matt had worked with him before on a BBC radio series called Time for Watt. They recorded two songs, one of which stood out. Now, the very first record we made was a Gershwin song, um, Love Walked In. And it didn't set the world alike. It was a good record, but it didn't set the world alike. Love walked right in and drove the shadows away. Love walked right in and brought my sunniest day. One magic moment and my heart seemed to know that love said hello though not a word was spoken love walked in may not have been a hit but george believed in matt's talent so set about searching for something a bit different this would take some time though and the bills still had to be paid once again commercials came to the rescue between April and October, Matt recorded jingles for gravy, chocolate bars, cigarettes, petrol, reprised his soap bar hit and taped this recently discovered tune for a long-forgotten chocolate assortment. 
Lucky numbers, lucky numbers, chocolate and chew. You be lucky, mighty lucky, I'm lucky too. Bite the chewy chocolate, that's lucky for you. Take your pick and you're in luck with sweet 17. Chew that chewy cherry white, you see what I mean. Caramel or lemon log, lucky 15. Lucky numbers, the chewiest, the luckiest sweets you can buy. Chewy chocolate and toffee, lucky numbers by Cadbury. Lucky numbers, lucky numbers, chocolate and chew. You be lucky, you be lucky, I'm lucky too. Pick your lucky number, cause it's lucky for you. Lucky numbers! Meanwhile, George Martin had discovered what he thought was just the right song and called Matt back to the studios at Abbey Road. He said, well, I've got a pretty little song in the office and we could sort of do a Nat King Cole on it. I said, oh, George, not another impersonation. He said, no, he said, I just want that sort of feel that Nat Cole gets on a record. And we did this pretty little song. The lyrics were written by a mate of mine. Well, he was, a, in a way, he was a rival, but he was the guy who was the producer for Columbia and that was Norman Newell. And it was a lovely song, but it was a, a ballad. It was very much in the realms of the softer stuff of Frank Sinatra. I, I loved the song. I thought it was a beautiful song. And I thought, well, there's no chance of this in today's market. Because remembering, the market in those days was Cliff Richard, Adam Faith, Elvis Presley, uh, Tommy Steele, Rock with the Caveman. And, uh, <laughs> that was the sort of music that was selling. So I didn't really give this anything didn't stand a snowball in hell's chance, you know. And George phoned me about three weeks later. He said, keep your fingers crossed. He said, we might be in the charts next week. And sure enough, Portrait of My Love went into the charts and stayed there for an awful long time. And I think to everybody's amazement, including Matt's, it became a big hit. It really established him right back in the forefront of, of the best singers of the country. There could never be a portrait of my love For nobody could paint a dream You and he said, just made a portrait of my love. Rosemary Squires. And he said, I don't think it's going to make much difference, not going to make anything of it. All the pop scene is around, and I don't sing the pop stuff. We said, don't worry, Matt, this is pure gold. This is great. You've got class. You're the kind of person we want on our show. And he came on and he sang it, and it was wonderful. And he just went on being great, you know, <laughs> and not trying to be anyone but himself. The Mona Lisa it would take, I know, a Michelangelo, and he would need the glow of dawn that paints the sky above to try. A portrait of my love. Portrait of my love, sung for the very first time on television during Rendezvous with Rosemary in December 1960. Although the show no longer exists in the archives, Matt was given an acetate disc of his performance after the show. Rosemary loved his appearance and it did wonders for her ratings, so she invited him to do several more for her series perhaps most memorably when he played the part of a dog. Give me a kiss. I really have to go, Mama will worry. Give me a kiss. It's getting late, I really have to hurry. Oh, give me a kiss. Just a cheesy wheezy little one and then good night. <laughs> Mama will spank. The night is young and you are here so near. But Papa will Please let me whisper in your ear, my dear. But Papa will say. This is the moment I have dreamed of, darling. Oh, what bliss. Oh, it wasn't just the charts that Matt was impressing. It caught the ear of other professionals, notably Tony Christie and Bruce Forsyth. And I, I didn't realise he was, a, he was English. I thought he was an American. Because in those days, all the great singers were American. So when they said that's Matt Monroe, a brand new re British recording artist, I thought, great, you know, we've finally produced a world-class male vocalist 
uh, to get up there with the Sinatras and the Vic Damones and the Tony Bennetts. Here was the voice with a difference. We'd heard Sinatra for years and Andy was all these people, but then here was a British singer with a certain timber to his voice that nobody else had. His broadcasting career was gathering momentum with regular appearances on the BBC Saturday Club. And in June 1960, he became a regular on ATV's Lunchbox, broadcast live from Birmingham. The show was presented by Noel Gordon, who was delighted that one of the show's regular singers had a record climbing the charts. Matt, just about where is the disc this week on the hit parade, the national one? Oh, the national one. Uh, number 10. I say... Something that I learned just before we came on the air, uh, I did know, of course, that we here in Birmingham have our own hip parade. Well, I didn't know this. As distinct yes. uh, from the national one, and Matt's disc is, in fact, this week fourth on the fourth? Midlands hip parade. So These Midland people know what they're doing, you know. They yes. do. You see what the Midlands think today, London thinks tomorrow. There is yes, that's quite right. Coming. I agree with it. Be wise. Be smart. Behave. Matt Nolan, Jerry Allen and his trio in a rare clip from the show, saved thanks to one of the singer's loyal fans. Whilst George Martin had tried out a couple of arrangers in previous sessions, it was his choice for Portrait of My Love that made all the difference. George talks us through it, and for those eagle-eared listeners out there, yes, the voice sounds different at times, because George had caught a nasty bout of laryngitis. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Spence! Johnny Spence became Matt's arranger, and in my opinion, he's one of the finest arrangers this country's ever produced. He was brilliant. Scores for um, brass and saxes and rhythm and strings, was well, they were the best I, I think I'd ever had. Much better than I could do. And, uh, and I thought that he, his work with Matt Monroe was one of the highlights, one of the joys of my life. He always turned up with a very tasteful score. He was also a lovely man too, a great character. Our routine was that we would select the songs together. He'd come to my office and we'd run through them. I'd get Johnny Spence in, who would sit at the piano, and we would look at the sheet music and we'd try them through. And we would then select a number of songs for a session. Matt's road manager, Bob West, also agreed with the choice. When Matt was recording with Johnny Spence, it was always something very special between the two of them, because they, they understood one another musically. Brilliantly. Portrait of My Love eventually reached number three in the charts and stayed there for months. The boy from Shoreditch was suddenly in great demand, and this time there would be no going back. The year's chain of events changed his whole world, and at last his indefatigable wife Mickey felt she might safely leave her job in Timpan Alley. At the turn of 1961, Matt recorded two songs for a spin-off album of Parade of the Pops, a radio show he appeared in regularly himself, and a few days later, he recorded a follow-up single to Portrait of My Love. Come a star That's how the people in Rome Ask you how you are And how I wish I were there to say come a star and hear once more your sigh when you reply Benissimo. Never heard of that single before? Well, there's good reason. Before it was actually released, Matt was asked to sing in ITV's answer to Eurovision, the British Song Contest, with a song called My Kind of Girl. Going head-to-head -head with performances by The Dallas Boys, Craig Douglas, Jill Day, The Barry Sisters and Mike Preston, with songs judged by a jury of experts long before the advent of a phone vote, Matt's number, an early song by Leslie Brickus, ended up coming second to Preston's Marry Me. Let's have a gay time, pretend it's May time 
When blossoms bud in the apple tree and you will marry me. I'm not sure many remember that Mike Preston number, although it did get to number 14 in the charts. Matt's song came second, and George Martin immediately saw its hit potential, cancelled the release of Comic Star, and rushed Matt and Johnny Spence into the studio, and boy was it the right decision. She walks Like an angel walks She talks Like an angel talks And her hair Has a kind of curl To my mind She's my kind of girl Pretty little face That face just knocks me off of my feet Pretty little feet She's really sweet enough to eat She looks like an angel looks She even cooks like an angel cooks And my mind's in a kind of world To my mind, she's my kind of girl And my heart's kind of full of joy Because she told me I'm her kind of boy Incidentally, My Kind of Girl peaked at number five, a whole nine places higher than Marry Me. So much for the jury of experts. With a tenure in the charts of 16 weeks, the song also introduced Matt to new audiences. His wife, Mickey, was knocked out. To our amazement, Matt's... Uh, second hit over here, My Kind of Girl, got into the American charts. Warwick had released uh, My Kind of Girl mm. as a single. It didn't do too bad. Steve Lawrence covered Portrait, mm. and he had his first hit record with Portrait, as I did. And I've spoken to him since then. You know, Steve's quite a good friend of ours, actually, him and his wife, really. And he said that he was going to co- cover... My kind of guy, he didn't have the nerve. <laughs> 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 he said, I couldn't do it twice, because he stole it from me in the States. You know? yeah. Not only was the song hot on both sides of the Atlantic, but it eventually opened the door for Matt to work in the States. After two big hits, George Martin turned his thoughts to an album. Richard Moore, sound engineer and Matt Monroe archivist. George thought Matt's laid-back style might work well with a small group and set up a late-night session. It was just Matt, Johnny on piano, a bassist and a drummer. They taped six songs, three brand new songs with a group, and two with just piano. And they finished the session with a fun improvised version of It's Alright With Me. Probably the closest Matt got to jazz. Saying that, he did retain his title as best male singer in Melody Maker's Jazz Poll 63-64, with a 10% lead over George Melee. It's the wrong time and the wrong place Though your face is lovely, it's the wrong face It's not her face, lovely face It's all right with me It's the wrong smile with the wrong lips Though your lips are tempting, they're the wrong lips They're not her lips, but they're such tempting lips That it's all right Ultimately, the recordings were rejected and left on the shelf for more than 45 years. One of the recordings, a version of one of George Martin's own compositions featuring just Matt and Johnny, was later chosen as George's favourite Matt Monroe recording. Sad am I I hold a faded dream I keep it deep inside But no one will ever know 
Who can tell how bluebirds feel when the summer steals away far away? There's a place, a meadow deep. A cottage lost from view that stands on a high blue hill, and no one will ever know what it means to never go. No. Ultimately, though, George, Johnny and Matt, fondly nicknamed the Three Musketeers, went down a more traditional route and made a fully orchestrated album. More successful singles followed. Gonna build a mountain from a little hill Gonna build a mountain, at least I hope I will Gonna build a mountain Gonna build it high I don't know how I'm gonna do it Only know I'm gonna try Now that you're here with me Old winter's come and gone And now every single tree has leaves and flowers on There isn't anything As wonderful as spring When love comes along My love and devotion Will all Now and forever I'll live for you My love and devotion Softly I will leave you softly For my heart would break If you should wake And see me go So I leave you softly Long before you miss me Long before your arms for one more hour one more day Softly gave Matt another top 10 hit and this one stayed 18 weeks in the charts He was now extremely busy broadcasting recording and touring Mickey knew they would have to make sacrifices Well it was absolutely wonderful but there was one thing that we weren't prepared for We'd been together nearly 24 hours a day of our lives from when we met. And suddenly, (laughs) this was not going to be, because I was a mother by then, so I had a child to think of, and I couldn't just up and go and leave my daughter. So we had suddenly separations, and we did not like that. From that point of view, it was difficult. But of course, suddenly from living in one room in my mother's house, you know, we put a house, our own house, a car being picked up in limousines, you know, first class airfares. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And don't think we didn't enjoy it as we did. Matt's chart success saw work flooding in, but the singer was constantly worried about following up his triumphs, as a singer is only as strong as his last hit. So he continued to take any work going. 
Even with work continuing to come in, he was constantly underestimating just how good he was, as Bob Monkhouse recalls. He'd ask you things out of a clear blue sky that were almost unanswerable. I mean, Matt would... I remember him at the Palladium. He was topping the bill. I was first half closing and compare. And I knocked at his door, number one dressing room, and said, it's me. And he said, oh, come in. He said, come in. Only, what do you think? Should I make records? Because I'm listening to the one I've just made, and it sounds tinny. It's tinny. My voice is tinny. Uh, is my voice tinny? And he really wanted me to answer him. And if I had said, yes, it is, I swear he would have taken me seriously. And then I pointed out to him that he'd balanced a whole lot of things on top of the record player, including several tin ashtrays, and they were rattling and causing a, s s a sibilance. <laughs> I took them all off and he said, oh, that's better. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's rather good, isn't it? Someone who also had memories of working with Matt at the London Palladium was Helen Shapiro. I, I didn't know about these theatre traditions in those days that artists would, if, between shows, would wear a dressing gown and take their, their stage clothes off. They wouldn't put their street clothes back on. And he had this very smart dressing gown and the black socks and the black shoes. And uh, he just came in and started doing one at a silly walk. And uh, I don't know, it, it was just fun, just fun to be with. Matt had the honour of presenting his own TV series, Meet Matt Monroe, on Associated Rediffusion, which sadly doesn't survive. But he also worked on a full BBC radio series of his own called Matt's Kind of Music, some of which Matt recorded and kept himself. Former show band producer John Brow was at the helm and knew exactly who he wanted as the show's musical director. Later on, I had a series with Matt called My Kind of Music. I used Johnny Spence and Matt Munro uh, together because they fitted hand in glove, you know. Hello and welcome to the show. We'll be singing and playing songs which we hope you like as much as we do. Well, let's dig up one of those swinging oldies that Johnny Spence used to practice instead of his scales. A sort of five-finger exercise on Lulu's Back in Town. <laughs> My old tuxedo press Gotta sew a button on my vest Cause tonight I gotta look my best To lose back in town Gotta get a half a bus When we were doing uh, my kind of music We were live The programme was in the early evening So we would finish rehearsal And uh, nip round to the pub for a quick drink Before the programme come back whilst the audience was um, coming into the studio. This one particular occasion, I remember that we were coming back from the pub and the entrance to the studio was down a long flight of stairs. And unfortunately, Matt fell down this flight of stairs and broke his ankle. He was in a lot of pain, but I said, can you still sing? And he said, Yes, as we were live, it was absolutely necessary for him to go on and sing, which he did. And uh, he was in a lot of pain, looked very grey and was perspiring freely, which obviously you would do if you'd broken your ankle. But he performed and not a soul in the audience knew that anything was wrong. Incredible. Matt may have been a regular hit maker, but royalties take months to filter through so Jingle Sessions still featured regularly in his diary. Garden peas, garden fresh From Hartley's garden farm Summer fresh on the table When the name is Hartley's on the label Here, find them here Every day a little zow Every day remember gal To keep your home real fresh and clean Use a little zow See what I mean? Make friends with Horniman's Horniman's Yellow Dividend Tea Make friends with Horniman's The tea that makes friends is Horniman's Start with a room And mangers Making it good With mangers Finishing off With mangers You can be sure with mangers I wake up in the morning I wake up with a plus 
For I've got the formula for health in the mouth without fuss You can always do with an extra pint of please One occasion saw him fly to America to record five different commercials for Pepsi-Cola. The booking required a round trip of 6,000 miles, for jingles that lasted only 20 seconds to one minute each. But the biggest thrill for the singer came by being accompanied by a small 50-piece orchestra, led by Hugo Winterhalter. It's here, it's here, it's crystal clear You team in the bright green bottle The soft drink that's tingling Refreshingly light, lemon and lime Tuned up just right New team is here, it's crystal clear You'll love every single tingle So tingling, so refreshing Perfectly light Lemon and lime teamed up just right Pepsi-Cola Company makes new team That's why it's so good So try new T-double-E-M team You're sure to love this bottle of new team New team T-double-E-M Matt even joined the ranks of Michael Holliday, Bing Crosby and Sammy Davis Jr. as the voice of Shell, although sadly it seems that this fragment is all that survives. You can be sure of Shell. 1962 found Matt making his second Parlophone album, one that was his own favourite and certainly that of his fans. Matt Monroe sings Hoagy Carmichael. Johnny actually came up with the idea, Johnny Spence. And we sat and talked it over with George, you know. I was doing summer season at Weymouth, and I used to travel up every Sunday and do a couple of sessions, you know. Mm. And uh, I was very happy with that. Very happy. We played the album the other night, actually, and there's some good tracks on it. Mm. Some, respect, Georgia, I love. I think it's a great arrangement. Georgia, Georgia. The whole day through Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia On my mind Georgia on my mind Georgia Georgia. The album received praise from no less than Bing Crosby. And he said that uh, I Get Along Without You Very Well, which is the track on the album, was the best record they'd ever heard. Mm. And I thought that was tremendous, a, a great compliment. I get along without you very well, of course I do. Except when soft rains fall And drip from leaves Then I recall The thrill of being sheltered In your arms Of course I do Hoagy Carmichael himself also wrote to Matt. Dear Matt, Sitting here and listening to your rendition of One Morning in May, I had a strange feeling that not once had I thanked you for all the fine renditions you did for me. That's not right, so here I am, thanking you, even if it might be a repeater. Believe me, you balladed all those songs so believably good. One Morning in May is a real achievement, most difficult. My little gone mother's favourite song of mine... Keep up the great work, sincerely, Hoagie. One morning in May, don't forget, dear, that one wonderful day when we met, dear. The world over was blue clover and hearts carefree and gay. One morning in May, to remember. 
remember the love smolders away to a member and dreams perish we'll still cherish that one one morning in May Matt loved recording with George and Johnny not only were they doing what they all loved but they had great fun doing it as George remembers and we had lots of giggles you know, if you can't have a giggle in your work, then it's not worth doing. And Matt and Johnny and I would often corpse on the studio floor laughing around, you know, when we were recording. But I think it, it makes for a good atmosphere and I think it, it, you get good results as a result of it. You know, I think that um, it's all part of art. I think, you know, if, you're, if you've got a good atmosphere going in the studio, then the singer behaves better, he sings well, and the band love it too. They're great fun, fun times. Fancy running into you, I knew you by your smile I didn't know you were around Everybody's missed you, you've been gone for quite a while It's nice to see you back in town By the way there's lots to tell. I bought a f- car. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I bought a f- car. Mm, I see. Charming. Issue it. It'll be a hit. I meant to say I bought a Fiat car. <clears throat> Matt and the band having fun recording a song during one of those Sunday night sessions. He was now a regular of summer seasons, spending up to 16 weeks of the year with his co-stars, Morgan and Wise, Mike and Bernie Winters, Dusty Springfield and her brother Tom, and Jimmy Tarbuck. But the opportunity made him friends for life. Bruce Forsyth remembers one summer in particular. The first stage show we did together was at Coventry. It was a show that lasted about six or seven weeks. So we got to know each other well then. The whole gang of us would go ten pin bowling and, uh, and that kind of thing. So we really got to be mates. And uh, we used to eat quite a few times a week after the show. Well, this particular night, he was a little bit late. And uh, we're sitting there already with the cards and the fish and chips were getting cold and everything. And all of a sudden there was a buzz at the door and um, went to the door and opened it. And there was Matt. His, his uh, suit was all torn here and he had quite a few marks over his face with bits of blood and everything like that. And the other, his trousers were... And I thought, cool. I said, but what happened? He said, has one of your fans caught up with you at last? He said, no, he was coming into the building, he said, and I walked right through a plate glass window. I went right through it. I, I said, come on, lads, we better go down there and clear it up, get a couple of buckets, put the glass in, and, and, and you know, sort of go down there and clear up, because it really, he said, yes, I, th I think we better. So we went down there, stairs, and we're picking up glass and put it in the buckets, and it's a terrible thing to come through, the, and I'm picking up things. And then I, I stopped, I said, Matt, I said, were you smoking a cigar? He said, yes. He said, he said yes, I was. I said, what do you I picked up this cigar and it was all splattered where he'd walked into this plate glass window and it turned the whole thing into a... It was, it, it was ridiculous. I mean, we couldn't stop laughing. When he was doing summer season in Weymouth, time was so tight that he was doing two shows a day, then driving to London and into the studios to cut a few sides of his Hoagie Carmichael album. And most Sundays he would drive to Blackpool for a lucrative Sunday concert. Incredible, especially as he used to drive himself everywhere. He liked driving. Matt and Bernie Winters used to play snooker for half a crown a game. They played all through the night on one occasion, and Bernie ended up owing Matt £26,000. Matt had a habit of being accident-prone. Gales were sweeping many northern seaside resorts, it was so bad 
that ship sheltered in the bays away from the rough seas. As the singer left the North Pier Theatre in Blackpool after the second performance, his hat blew off. He tried to catch it, but the strong gusts of wind on the pier knocked him over twice. He fractured his left wrist, hurt his other arm, strained his back and lost a valuable gold watch, all for the sake of that hat. He also broke his ribs falling off a horse, his collar bone in a car incident, his thumb and leg, but it didn't stop him performing. On several TV commitments, he'd be carried onto the set and lent on a stool, and no one was ever the wiser. Make friends with Horniman's, Horniman's yell. It doesn't come from the heart. You didn't know that was me, did you? It was actually, I did that TV commercial about two years ago. Or a little bit more than that, actually. Didn't get any money for it, but... I've got a warehouse full of tea, if anybody's in the reason. I must be honest and say that a long time before that, I did another commercial, which um, I like to think became rather popular. It was a arpeggio, whatever that might mean. You be a little lovelier each day. That was me as well. But I had to stop doing that one. People used to think I was the one in the bath. It wasn't me at all. She walks like an angel walks. Thank you. She talks like an angel talks. And her hair has a kind of curl. Matt having fun on stage at the Cliffs Pavilion, Bournemouth. Although now a star, the East Ender never forgot where it all began for him. Returning to Hong Kong was one of the biggest thrills of his career and something of a sentimental journey for the singer. Operation Santa is an annual charity campaign co-organised by the South China Morning Post and the English service programme of radio television Hong Kong. He was there at their invitation to be the star attraction of the station's annual three-day drive for dollars to raise money for impoverished children. Matt had become one of the best-known and most in-demand entertainers in the Crown Colony, and his brief appearance was the highlight of the charity events. He wouldn't have missed it, even though he flew out on Christmas Eve for just one day and a journey of some 12,000 miles. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Matt Munro. I love the looks of you, the lure of you, the sweet of you, the pure of you, the eyes, the arms, the mouth of you, the east, west, north and the south of you. I love to gain complete control of you. Whilst Matt had recorded a couple of small items for films in the early days, he was about to record his first big movie theme for perhaps the most famous franchise of them all. When the producers of the James Bond movies, Albert Broccoli and Harry Saltzman, decided they wanted to have a theme tune associated with every Bond film, they called on Matt to start a great tradition, which still continues now, nearly 60 years later. Dr No was the first release, but it only had an instrumental. But From Russia With Love was to be the first with the song. When the film first came out, Matt and Mickey crept into the ABC Forum cinema, sat in the back row and settled down to watch the film. Mickey was apoplectic when the song didn't come on over the opening credits and was nearly frothing at the mouth when you could just hear a few seconds of the track coming out of a transistor radio while James Bond is wooing a girl on a punt on the river. Hall was forgiven, though, when she heard the full song over the closing credits on the canals of Venice. Her husband was far more interested in the movie. 
The song gave him another UK Top 20 hit, a number one in Japan and also the Philippines. With the advent of the Bond phenomenon, it was inevitable that such celluloid notoriety would provoke a demand for his work in the States. The recording of the song had its problems, and it took quite a while for George, Johnny and the orchestra to get the Russian sound they wanted. This was eventually achieved by overdubbing a piano at half speed. Let's eavesdrop into the session, where Matt uncharacteristically was the cause of a take breaking down. I fly to you Much wiser since my <clears throat> Sorry, John. Sorry, John. <clears throat> Last. Take 12. From Russia with love I fly to you Much wiser since my goodbye to you I've traveled the world to learn must return from Russia with love. Matt was desolate in 1963 when his mother died of a brain lesion. She kept working until very late in life, despite all of her son's efforts to dissuade her. She was utterly independent in the way of many old people. Matt would give her money and she'd put it in a cupboard. Two weeks later, upon a visit from her son, the money would still be in the cupboard, untouched. He attended her funeral in the morning, and like the professional he was, still appeared later that night at the Odeon Leicester Square for a concert with Shirley Bassey, who he affectionately called Fred. 1964 was a big year. Matt Jr. was born, and the singer represented the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest. But first they would have to choose a song. Matt had to sing all six contenders, which were performed and broadcast live on BBC Television's A Song for Europe, introduced by David Jacobs. This show wasn't kept, although recently a recording from the programme was unearthed. Whilst the sound is a little bit fuzzy, none of this has been heard since its original broadcast. To sing all the songs tonight will be one singer, and I think you'll agree there's one man who can do this job probably better than anybody else because it really is a very difficult job indeed and I refer of course to the star singer in tonight's show ladies and gentlemen Matt Monroe <laughs> right, uh, you know a little bit about the competition you know who wrote the first song You've met the singer. So now let's hear that song, Lionel Bart's Choose. There are glad songs, there are sad songs. Choose, my darling. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The final result, the song to represent the United Kingdom in the Eurovision Song Contest in Copenhagen on March the 21st is without a doubt the song written by Tony Hatch called I Love the Little Things. And I... Matt travelled to Copenhagen with his newly appointed manager Don Black, David Jacobs and a whole contingent of British music industry notables and he performed on the show. I Love the Little Things, see Tony Hatch in Musik og Ord. Og den synges af Matt Munro. I love the little things you say And I love the little things you do Let's stay forever together this way My love, I'm so in love with you When you whisper I love you And tell me that The song placed a respectable second but very few people remember it now, 
or indeed the winner. That's all right. I've forgotten it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have, <laughs> especially the public. But there was one song that would be remembered long after the contest, thanks to Matt's ability to spot a potential hit. I first heard this song in Copenhagen, and it was called Varum Nua Varum. Varum Nua Varum Muss alles vergehen Varum Nua Varum Bleibt gar nichts bestehen it was in, written by an Austrian boy called Uda Jürgens. I liked this song very much indeed, but it didn't have an English lyric. Matt loved it. Don Black. And he said, Don, have a go at doing a lyric to it. So I did, I called it Walk Away. And it was, I think, possibly the most successful record I've ever had throughout the world. Long Walk away, please go Before you throw your life away A life that I could share for just a day I'm sad that I After searching so long But as good as he was at seeing the potential for a song, he turned down an exclusive on the tune Shadow of Your Smile, long before Tony Bennett cut the disc. The author of the song sent Matt the composition, demonstrated as an oboe solo when it was first written, but the singer didn't think it very commercial. Bennett sent him a thank you note. One songwriting team that didn't pass Matt by was Lennon and McCartney. In 1964, he recorded a ballad version of All My Loving, and whilst John Lennon and Paul McCartney weren't exactly complimentary about the recording, it was at least proof of the quality of their writing ability. It's fine, you know. He did it how people imagine it should be done. Yeah, that was the thing. After Matt Monroe did it, everyone said, oh, ooh, that's a nice song, isn't it? Whereas beforehand, they thought it was just a, a gay little ditty, you know. It still is. But uh, it changed a few people's minds about us, I think. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Tomorrow I'll miss you Remember I'll always be true And then while I'm away I'll ride home every day And send all my loving to you Lennon and McCartney may not have been a fan of the interpretation, but Matt gained another unexpected chart hit, courtesy of the Beatles, because of a contractual loophole in their recording contract prohibiting the issue of a single, either instrumentally or vocally, unless all four members of the group had taken part in the recording session. Since Paul McCartney had recorded the song solo, accompanied by just a guitar and a string quartet, a single couldn't be issued. I was in Blackpool watching television and Paul McCartney came on and did yesterday. I immediately picked up the phone and phoned George Martin and said, I've got to do that song. So I strode in with giant strides, you know, and uh, I was very fortunate with that song. Yesterday, of course, it's a unique song. It was the first song ever to have any instruments on it apart from either the Beatles or myself. And it was such a great ballad that it was natural for Matt to put on his version of it. And of course his version 
was a little bit slower and very much more schmaltzy, I suppose, than Paul's. And uh, it suited Matt very well. I have to say though that Paul hated it. <laughs> Matt's version crashed into the top 50 on release, steadily climbing up the charts and remained there in impressive 12 weeks. It turned out to be one of the last recordings the singer made for EMI. Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday Suddenly I'm not half the man I used to be There's a shadow hanging over me Oh, I believe in yesterday Why? You've been listening to part two of Matt Monroe, The Boy from Shoreditch. Tune in next week to hear how the phone call that came next gave the singer opportunities he'd never dreamt of and the song that would ultimately become synonymous with Matt Monroe for the rest of his life. But it wasn't all a bed of roses. Yesterday, love was the script was written and presented by Michelle Monroe and produced by Richard Moore. Now I need a place to hide away. Oh, I believe this was a Minta Monroe production. Why she had to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said something wrong. Now I long for yes. Born free. If you'd like to know more about the life of Matt Monroe, you may also enjoy The Singer Singer, The Life and Music of Matt Monroe a biography by Matt's daughter, Michelle. Also available is Words and Music, an abridged audio version of the biography, along with rare audio clips and video performances on a custom-made USB memory stick. See the links in the YouTube or Mixcloud description for more details.